T. Weidel Inn, Moffat and Nickel joint venture, handle design and seismic analysis for the new Bay Bridge East Span. Uh, my name is Marwan Nader. Uh, I am a uh, vice president at uh, T. Weidel Inn International uh, and a technical director for the bridge line of business uh, at T. Weidel Inn International. Uh, I, uh, uh, I am originally from uh, Lebanon, uh, uh, Beirut, Lebanon. In fact, I'm from the mountains uh, in an area uh, called Kura. Um, I came to the United States in uh, 1985 uh, to study at UC Berkeley and uh, since then I fell in love with the Bay Area and uh, decided to reside here. met my wife and uh, live in Walnut Creek. I have two kids, uh, twins, uh, Nicole and Danielle. Uh, they uh, are uh, the joy of life. I actually was uh, studying at UC Berkeley when 1989 earthquake occurred and uh, uh, didn't, didn't feel as bad as it actually was uh, when, uh, when I was at uh, the campus. Um, basically, uh, uh, some of the buildings shook and uh, you know, after, after that we went about our business and not until I was at Safeway trying to buy some uh, food uh, did I hear, you know, there was no internet, news didn't spread as much. And uh, did I hear that some of the people were talking about Bay Bridge collapse? As a student and a researcher, I uh, did my uh, graduate work there, my master's, and then later on my PhD. And uh, my thesis was on seismic behavior of steel structures. So uh, I was almost done at the time with my dissertation. Uh, so what I did is I did a postdoc, and in it I uh, did some uh, support to some of the staff at UC Berkeley, the researchers, to uh, do the inspection of the damage that occurred. So I actually walked the bridge from end to end and uh, looked at the damage and uh, uh, supported, supported them in uh, some of the reports that they put out. Just all these uh, braces that you see and all these trusses were not up to code. So they all needed retrofitting, uh, which meant you disruption to traffic. Um, so no, uh, when, when we first looked at it, it looked a very, uh, not very significant damage, but the more you looked at it, the more it, it felt like, gee whiz, I mean, this bridge, a, a few more seconds or, uh, and this bridge could have, some of the spans could have winded up in the water. Now, I joined T.Y. in 1992, and uh, I, my first job was with the Golden Gate, uh, on the Golden Gate project. Uh, I uh, basically uh, did the seismic retrofit uh, for the Golden Gate project, project at that time. That job involved two years of his life, and all the while he was keeping an eye on the Bay Bridge developments. We were following it up. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of colleagues uh, at Caltrans that were working on it and uh, were hearing it at conferences, the progress and whatnot. It was about 1997 when uh, basically uh, Caltrans basically put out a report which was very clear that they are looking at replacing the bridge. They uh, had a seismic advisory board that uh, obviously was advising the governor at the time and they endorsed it and uh, it, was, it was basically put forward as uh, a project that they would like to have consulting firms get involved in. So we basically, uh, they put an RFP, a request for proposals out, and TYLN was uh, one of uh, four or five companies. We actually did a joint venture with, T with Moffat Nichols, so the actual design uh, firm uh, that did the uh, structures design for this project is TYLN Moffat Nickel. So basically the idea was you need a signature span over the navigational channel and all of a sudden they opened it to the public and the public fully supported it. It was very clear, they wanted a signature span. So Senate Bill 60 came up and basically clearly put out that the new bridge has to have a signature span. You know, designers uh, uh, from the Design JV uh, uh, were, were basically sent over to China to live there. Uh, from my end, I basically was at one point practically going to China once a week every month. Uh, my wife's name is Rula Deeb and uh, she's also from Lebanon. We met here, she was doing her PhD in uh, the environmental engineering in uh, UC Berkeley as well. It, it was very stressful and the job is 24-7. I mean, it it's really is, sucks you in a way that is unbelievable. For example, give you a regular week. I mean, when I am not traveling, I would come home, have dinner and be able to be there for that one hour. And if I do that, that's great, because in the morning when they leave, chances are I'm either gone already or I'm crashed sleeping still because I had to stay late because I'm communicating with China. So 
it was that one hour that was so special to be there for dinner and spend a little time on a regular day. And then when I'm gone that, you know, that week or two when I'm in China, obviously I'm not around. The, the sacrifice that the significant other does in terms of support and understanding um, is, is, is great and one does not really appreciate it until one day you actually realize that uh, you're not spending enough time together. You're not, uh, you're not being able to talk about the uh, simple stuff and then all of a sudden uh, school stuff for the kids. I, I realized how little I know about what's going on in the school and I would only hear about the problems that one of them is having with the school. So it was certainly stressful, but, uh, but uh, I must say, I mean, um, uh, I have a great wife that, uh, that really helped me through this, uh, this period. But she's raising twins and you're in Shanghai. Uh, in a way, you're right. And, and not only that, she's also working as well uh, as a, in a, in a, a full-time job. So it was very difficult for her. So when you went home, when you were home, did you go home and talk about this bridge or did you say, I don't want to hear it? Well, it started initially by yes, there was interest, but after a while it was uh, no, I don't want to hear it. In fact, when you're home, let's not, uh, let's try to make it about home. We came up with the idea of having the one single shaft, split it into four shafts, and putting these shear links so that they diffuse the energy and fuse and dissipate energy and keep the shafts elastic. Then we had to deal with the west side where we are coming at a very sharp angle from the cable. So what we did is we came up with the idea of looping that cable around and coming up from the other side. And when we did that, it worked well from a structural perspective because we can do it and aesthetically it looked great. It's the first time ever something like that has been built. And the last one is this East Anchorage. And there what we needed to do was take 18,000 wires and anchor them in a five and a half meter box, which usually these 18,000 wires get anchored in a five story building. I kind of joke around, you know, there's over a dozen first, time, first things on this, on this bridge. Uh, there was nothing that we could go back to a book or a previous bridge that we would say that's what they did over there and therefore that's what we do. Uh, my parents were here this last Christmas and I had the opportunity bringing my dad uh, up to the top of the tower, uh, 86 years old. Uh, he, he, he really was uh, very, I was very happy to, to that he made it. Uh, Nadi, and he's a mathematics teacher, uh, uh, very much understanding physics and mathematics and totally got the whole idea about the complexity of self-anchored suspension bridge when I explained it to him. Uh, it was very, very clear that the Bay Area community wanted something different. And by God, they got it. And it's, it's certainly going to be for the ages for people to see it on postcards. Uh, was it painful? Yes, it was. Was it very expensive? Yes, it was. Uh, is it worth it? I believe time will tell, but I have a sense that everybody you know, a few years from now will think it was certainly worth it. I feel very proud of whatever, what everybody achieved. I personally feel very proud of it.